But first, all of the major stock indices dropped significantly Friday after a weaker than expected jobs report is raising fears of a slowing economy. The Dow dropped 1.5 percent. That's more than 600 points. The tech-heavy Nasdaq shed nearly 420 points, while the S&P 500 slid over 100 points. Friday represented the second consecutive day of a broad market sell-off. Stock market investors were jolted in part by data from the Labor Department showing that the U.S. added 114,000 jobs in July. Now, that's about 60,000 less than what economists had predicted. The unemployment rate climbed to 4.3 percent, and that's the highest level since October 2021. CBS News contributor J.D. Durkin joins me now for more. So, J.D., what do you make of the market's reaction and are these fears about recession actually legitimate or is this a lot of, uh, of hair on fire unnecessarily? Well, no shortage of hair on fire headlines from time to time in the world of finance, uh, certainly here. I, I suppose I was a bit surprised with the reaction to the jobs report because in, in this current bull market cycle, Lana, when we've got an iffy jobs report that has ironically tended to be good news for U.S. equities, the hope for many investors in the major market indexes there being that a weakening job market will mean that the central bank might be cutting to closer interest rates. Um, however, the, the concern for the central bank is what is forcing them, what might force them to, to, to eventually cut rates here? Is it because inflation is actually getting back to its goal of 2%? Well, that would be a good reason to cut interest rates. Or is it because we're seeing an unexpected softening in the labor market, which could uh, take the uh, the form of, for instance, unemployment spiking unexpectedly. That would force the hand of the central bank to cut interest rates for the wrong reasons. I think today's jobs report started to plant the seed in the head of investors that maybe we're in that second camp, which is not something Chairman Powell has talked a lot about at the central bank the better part of the last two years. But ultimately, um, I don't necessarily know if anyone's hair should be on fire for this. Selling in the markets happens because it's natural. Markets go up, markets come down. Yes, we did hit correction ter uh, territory for the NASDAQ, but we can't forget it's a Friday in the summer, it's August, there's low volume, there's a crush of earnings reports, a lot of which have been very disappointing, especially for the big tech companies. Right. So you can look at all the selling and simply blame the jobs report. Yeah, you, that would be oversimplification for sure. So JD, how should people who aren't actually day traders react to these numbers? Well, it's definitely something to keep in mind. Look, we always say the stock market is not the economy, but there is a close correlation between the two, especially in terms of uh, things like wages, uh, things like the, the state of the labor uh, the market. Lots of Americans have 401ks that are tied to these companies. So, you know, there's certainly no reason to panic right now because we can't forget, Lana, we just had a stock market all-time high two and a half weeks ago. Right. And <laughs> all-time high after all-time high, I would argue throughout all of 2024, with the exception of a little bit of time in April, the stock market has continued to hit all-time highs. And the truth is, historically speaking, the S&P 500 averages one 10 percent pullback a year, three 5 percent pullbacks a year. And that's largely what we're seeing right now. So even if you're not a direct investor in the major market indexes, really you want to keep your eye on those interest rates from the central bank, especially if you are a borrower in the economy. If you got credit card debt, you got a mortgage, certain types of student loans, those interest rates starting to come down will begin to give you a bit of pressure. But we're certainly a long way off from the era of so-called easy money, Lana, back when interest rates were at or near zero, which they were up until 2022. So let's talk a little bit more about projections for interest rates, J.D., because I'm seeing a lot of people uh, proclaiming with certainty that a rate cut is happening in September. And some of them are predicting half a, per, a, half, um, a point, uh, three-fourths of a point. Uh, that, all of that seems a little bit big, given that we haven't had any cuts up until now. What are you expecting? I would be really surprised if we got uh, with the, the fancy parlance for Wall Street is 50 basis points. That's a right. needlessly fancy half a percentage point. Um, I think if and when the Fed starts to cut interest rates, they will do so incrementally. Uh, because, you know, one thing that I, I've always taken note that Chairman Powell says, he always says the historical record strongly argues against prematurely loosening monetary policy, and we will stay the course until the job is done. And what I believe Jer Jerome Powell is referencing are mistakes 
that we look back at in American history where central bank chairmen have faced this exact situation and said, uh-oh, there's this big loosening of, of labor conditions. We better dramatically cut interest rates. And what happens is inflation becomes a runaway train that you can no longer get ahead of. That's the mistake in the past from the 1970s that I think Jerome Powell is really careful about. Right now, I think there might be an overreaction from mm -hmm. some analysts and casters to say it'll be these big aggressive rate cuts. But right now, the market consensus is at least for a rate cut at the September 18th meeting. And it just is likely not going to be a huge one. All right. J.D. Durkin, appreciate you.